Hello, Vishal, I am from Bandles. Hey, it's DeAndre from Bandles 2. Today we're going to teach you how to use presets for your own personal game. I believe you just went there. Sweet. Wait, did you just say presets? Yeah. You don't use presets. No, we don't use that's presets. That's a bad, that's a well, no-no. I've never used presets. So presets can be used when used correctly to kind of make your own sound and get creative and get a little funky with it. You know what I mean? It's It should be used more of as a, as a tool to help you to the next level instead of just slapping it on there and calling it your own song. Yeah. Mostly I use presets when I can't come up with anything and I need a fresh place to start. You'll usually start with presets, and then you'll get inspired and turn it into something else. 90% mm -hmm. of our songs come from presets. So if you think that presets are bad, that's like saying we're bad producers. And, and if, you say, if you say that, you're probably I'm right. I'm coming for you. <laughs> I know your IP address. I'll <laughs> hack your Minecraft server. So we're going to show you three things. We're going to show you how to pick a preset, what to do with the preset, and one not to use a preset. That last one's important. <laughs> All right, so come into the Bandos layer and we will teach you what we know and don't know and act like we know. So in our project, we have a song called Spy Kids from our Spy Kids EP. And little did you know, but the whole drop is a preset. Let me explain. So we took a preset called FM Bending 2 from the Virtual Riot preset pack. Sounds something like this. Well, it sounds something like this. Which you can do right now. You can open up your DAW and open up that preset if you own the pack. And, and you didn't pirate yeah. the pack. Yeah, didn't pirate the pack. And so we took that preset and we kind of fucked around with it. And this is what the drop ended up sounding like once we were completely done with it. <laughs> As you can hear, it doesn't sound much like the original, although the unique characteristics that made that preset unique and kind of what gave it its voice are still kind of present. And that's the idea here. So to jump into our initial preset we started with, um, I'm going to play that over some drums so you can get the idea of what it would have sounded like if we didn't change anything. It sounds like shit. It sounds like a lot of rhythm tracks you guys have been making. You Don't guys. Do that. So our first point, when to use presets, like we talked about, is when you have trouble kind of coming up with an idea and your mind goes blank and you start to wonder if production is the right career for you, and that happens to us on a fairly regular basis, so we tend to use presets a lot. Yeah, and you want to keep using those presets in spots you can throw them in between your actual production that you have going on right now, and, and you can use them as placeholders, basically. And in the future, you can just change them and make them their own. But do not leave them there. I leave them there sometimes. <laughs> I'm talking about big producers. So one of the number one reasons you'd want to use a preset is when you just want to get something down, you have an idea in your head, and it's a good placeholder, like Vishal said, or DeAndre said. DeAndre. DeAndre said, it'll help you get your ideas out quicker. The next point we want to cover is how to use presets. So the idea here is to use the characteristics of the sound that made that sound unique in the first place. So if we jump in and we check out this preset, you can kind of hear how the growliness and the vocaliness and the guh, 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 that's kind of what makes it sound what it is. You know what I mean? That's what gives it its unique characteristics. So we want to preserve the guh, 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 for lack of a better way of putting it. So if we hop into Serum, we take a look, uh, you'll see that we have a high pass filter here. And after just kind of messing with things for a while, we realized that's what really gave it the monster growly guh, guh, you know, sound. So if I turn it up, you'll hear that that's what gives it the guh sound. And it kind of accentuates it a bit. Uh. Ugh, sorry for burping into the mic. Okay, so when we developed our preset that we made from this preset, uh, we 
tried to stick with the uh, tenet of keeping that aspect of it to make it keep its characteristics, and we came up with this. We're going to play the preset on its own. A lot of times what we like to do when using presets is we like to mess around with the filter specifically, and that'll help you get some different ideas of how to, you know, kind of change the voices, the voice of it, and, you know, kind of change what makes it unique. But like we said, the whole idea is to keep that fundamental part of that preset. Which, which in this case happened to be the, the, F, the filter effect on the, on the dissonance sequence uh, wavetable. So what we started to do is we looked at this high pass filter, and what we do most of the time when we're using presets is we isolate the thing that makes it special, and we fuck with it. So let's do that. Now it sounds like thinner and kind of less chumbo. And if you pull it down here, now it's more chumbo. There it is. And thick. There it is. There it is right there. Presets there make you successful. You learned it here, kids. The next step in really how to use a preset is to figure out what the sound is lacking and to kind of boost that. Because we all know that there's a cool thing that you like about the preset, but if the preset was already perfect, we just use the preset, which sometimes you do, but in this case, it was lacking in the girthiness. Girthiness and like the robotic nature of the sound that you can hear in the song itself. Yeah, so we needed more <laughs> girth. So what we did was we came over to the effects rack and we added a flange filter to give it more girthiness. If we turn it up really loud, you'll hear what we're talking about. Yo, yo, yo. Okay, now, now, see, now yeah. it's like, now the robot is angry, and now it's actually a robot. So, <clears throat> once you figure out what you don't like about the preset, and you kind of fill that in, um, you can, you know, you just fine tune it, throw an OTT on there, a little OTT, a little, little sausage fattener, a little, of course. you know, make it, you know what I mean, make it loud a little bit, something, something, and then, you know, EQ it. A lot of times, the problems that you'll have with presets are that, the EQ is all wonky and weird, and you're not covering the amount of frequencies that you want to cover. So in using EQs, this one's actually pretty good. It's a pretty light EQ, but you can see, if we isolate it, we had to boost certain frequencies that weren't getting boosted in the original preset. Yeah, and sometimes you have to take away those frequencies because they tend to be obnoxiously outstanding within the preset itself. So you have to kind of look at it through a... A, a sound hearing perspective with your ears, with your ears and your eyes, yep. and just kind of take down those those obnoxious fre frequencies so that the EQ is pretty leveled out. So here's what it sounds like with the drums and the the updated patch. It sounds girthier and it sounds more aggressive, and that's kind of what we were going for. <clears throat> the next thing I would recommend doing when you're using presets is to use what's called master tuning in Serum. Um, everybody knows what Serum is these days. It's pretty much the easy one, the one that's easy to use. So we use the easy one. So you open up Serum, and you go to your matrix, and what we like to do is we like to modulate what's called master tuning right here, and we use an LFO. Now, <clears throat> you might be saying, but DeAndre, or but Vishal, this makes it so it's out of key. To which I would answer, you're right. Moving on. <laughs> the LFO is going to change the pitch of the actual sound, and that helps with kind of giving presets different characteristics. We actually, fun fact, when using presets or even sounds of our own, we don't really draw MIDI. We really just put one long MIDI block when the sound is playing, and we'll write when that MIDI is playing, how the tuning of that MIDI goes, the pitch of the MIDI, everything is done within Serum. As you can see here, if you look at LFO4, LFO4, this is the tune curve, and that's what's going to modulate the master tuning and change the pitch of the sound. So if we make it obnoxious, you'll get the point here. It really helps to give the sound just a different voice overall. All right, let's do that. 
So pretty much use presets to learn and... Yeah, reverse engineer them, have fun. Because uh, if you're not having fun, then you should be trying to be a producer, DJ, whatever you want to do. Yes. Thanks for watching our video here on Disciple YouTube channel. YouTube channel. If you're interested in this preset that we made, we are going to bounce down some one shots of the preset and it'll be available in the link in the description down below. So thanks for watching guys and make sure to check out our EP on Disciple Roundtable. Thanks for watching another Disciple video. And if you like the video, please click like. And don't forget to subscribe.